What's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film. The Tag Along Part 1. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins by introducing an evil ghost called Mosin, which takes the form of a monkey or a child. They take advantage of a person's sense of guilt to make the person lose his mind. Wandering alone on the foggy mountain is an elderly woman named Ms. Selfish. Then an unknown voice calls her full name, and so she turns her back to see who it is. The following day, a neighborhood in Taipei City proclaims Ms. Selfish is missing after venturing into the mountain. The watchman named Uncle Psychic likes firecrackers to drive away the Mosines who captured her. A grandma sees Ms. Selfish's missing poster and wishes for her friend to return. Then she prepares breakfast for her grandson, Wei, a property agent. Still asleep, Wei's alarm goes off, and the grandma turns it off, then wakes him up. However, he doesn't budge at all, so the grandma returns to the kitchen, when Wei suddenly calls her to turn off his alarm. However, the grandma protests and says she did wake him up after turning off the alarm. Either way, Wei quickly bathes himself and eats breakfast, since he's late for work. As he eats, the grandma asks Wei to bring his girlfriend over for dinner. She also asks about their plan for marriage, since they've been together for five years now. However, Wei brushes it off, saying that it's not in their mind yet. Wei leaves the house, but forgets his lunch. The grandma tries to remind him, but it's too late. Suddenly, Miss Selfish's voice calls grandma's full name. So the grandma searches for her, but she's alone in the house. Upon closing the window, the front door opens by itself. She approaches the door to close it, but she slips and falls to the floor. She sits and sees a blood trail on the ground leading outside, when suddenly, two small black hands grab her head, and the grandma gasps for air as the entity takes over her. Meanwhile, Wei drives to his workplace while listening to his girlfriend's life radio broadcast. Suddenly, the grandma's call interrupts him, so he ends it instantly. Wei eventually arrives at work and proceeds to entertain clients, while always dropping his grandma's phone calls. After dealing with his last clients, he cleans the apartment he's selling, when a giggling girl emerges and disappears in a hallway. Wei checks the sound, but he only finds the lunchbox prepared by his grandma. So he tries to call his grandma, but there's no response. It's evening and Wei drives to pick up his girlfriend from the studio. Afterward, Wei invites her over for dinner at his grandma's request. But before they head home, Wei brings her to a newly built apartment. There they dance and share a loving moment. They're about to go deeper, but the girlfriend stops him when he doesn't have any hormone bags to use. However, Wei tells her that it'd be fine for her to be pregnant, since they're going to get married anyway. But the girlfriend stops him because she doesn't want what happened last time. Right then, Wei reveals that he mortgaged the grandma's house and saved the money for the apartment. Unfortunately, the girlfriend is unhappy with his decision, because she worries his grandma will think that Wei mortgaged the house because of her. Wei only wants to have their own place when they get married and build a family. But the girlfriend feels getting married at their age is too early. And besides, marriage isn't part of her plan for the future anyway. Defeated and hurt, Wei goes quiet and accepts her decision. Later, Wei and his girlfriend arrive at grandma's home. Wei searches for his grandma in the bathroom and tries to talk with her. The grandma only says that she's leaving to see Ms. Selfish's concert. Wei assumes that his grandma is mad at him, so he lets her go and returns to his girlfriend. She asks who he's talking to, but when Wei answers it's his grandma, the girlfriend gives him a weird look. The following day, Wei's neighbors celebrate Ms. Selfish's return. Meanwhile, Wei wakes up and excitedly looks for his grandma, but her room is tightly fixed. His grandma still hasn't returned. On his way to work, Wei finds the neighbors crowding around Faye's Miss Selfish. When Miss Selfish sees him, she instantly apologizes to him for an unknown reason. At work, Wei receives a mail camera, containing a video of Miss Selfish and other people trekking the mountain. The voice in the video reminds people never to call someone's full name in the haunting mountain and don't tap their shoulder, because if they turn around, the mountain will capture them to replace someone else in the woods. It can be deduced that the reason why Ms. Selfish apologized to Wei earlier is because she called the grandma to replace her in the mountains so she could be set free. At the end of the video, a little girl in a red dress is following the queue of hikers. Wei returns home and asks Uncle Psychic if the camera mailed to him belongs to Ms. Selfish. Uncle Psychic recognizes the camera and confirms it's from Ms. Selfish. Wei intends to return the camera, and so Uncle Psychic accompanies him. However, Ms. Selfish's house is empty and dark. So the two men decide to enter and investigate the premise. Unexpectedly, they encounter unexplainable occurrences. Wei walks past a room, where a figure with glowing eyes sits in a room. But when he checks it, there's no one. Then the display painting on the wall crashes on a table. A stereo system plays music despite the power failure, and all the doors shut by themselves. The two men eventually manage to escape from the house, and Wei vomits on the ground due to overwhelming fear. The following day, Wei and his girlfriend visit the police station and review three surveillance footage. 
The first video shows the grandma leaving the house, but never returning in the evening, meaning that the grandma who I encountered the other night is a specter. They rewind the same footage to morning and show the little girl in a red dress leading the grandma away. Then they review the footage from last night and see the same little girl chasing the two men out of Ms. Stelfish's house. The neighbors wonder how the grandma went missing when she didn't even visit the mountain lately. Then they mention the chopped down trees in the mountain have affected the mountain specter's home, so they come down to the towns and capture people. Meanwhile, Uncle Psychic plasters missing posters for the grandma and then sets off firecrackers as usual. The following day, Wei dreams about his grandma waking him up. He goes to the kitchen and remembers his younger self eating with her on the table. He cries at the sight of the memory when suddenly the grandma's voice whispers his full name. Wei searches for the voice, but he only finds a blunt trail leading to the kitchen. As he reads his written promise to always eat with grandma every day, a small black hand taps his shoulder. He turns around only to see a mosin on the table. The mosin lunges and takes over him when suddenly he wakes up in his bedroom. He goes to the kitchen and strangely sees his grandma. He tightly hugs her and cries because he thought he had lost her forever. As he embraces her, the grandma asks Wei to invite his girlfriend over for dinner. It's evening and during her shift, the girlfriend receives a strange call, crying while saying he doesn't love me anymore. The call ends and Wei is waiting for her outside the studio. Wei invites her for dinner. However, the girlfriend hesitates to accept the invitation because Wei's sweating and looks stick. So the girlfriend brings him to the hospital. But after signing the checkup form, Wei is gone. She finds him in front of the nursery, staring at the babies. He emotionally asks why she doesn't want to marry him or have children with him. The couple goes home and Wei invites her to eat, but she feels gross upon seeing Wei eating life insects and worms. So she shows Uncle Psychic Wei's strange actions. But when they arrive, Wei's gone, without a trace of his sick hormones. The following day, the patrol and police find the grandma walking on the highway. Meanwhile, the girlfriend accompanies Uncle Psychic, who is performing a ritual to scare specters and Mosians from the grandma's house. She then takes Ms. Selfish's camera from Wei's bedroom, then ends the ritual by cursing at the specters never to bother them again. Perturbed, the girlfriend announces on the radio, asking them to call the police if they see someone fitting Wei's description. After her night shift, she informs Wei's manager that he's missing and advises him to call her if her boyfriend shows up at work. After receiving a call from the police, the girlfriend visits grandma in the hospital. The doctor informs her that the grandma has an unstable mental condition. When the grandma recognizes Wei's girlfriend, she repeatedly shouts, I called Wei's name, then suddenly vomits out. The girlfriend then visits Uncle Psychic, who's certain that the mountain specters have transferred from Ms. Selfish's house to grandma's house. In her apartment, the girlfriend studies the mountain's entities. She watches an interview explaining that explosives and firecrackers are used to drive away the Mosines, so the place can be habitable again. She also reads the urban legend surrounding a little girl in a red dress. She compares the photo online to a video on Ms. Selfish's camera of a little girl following the hikers and concludes they resemble each other. Meanwhile, Uncle Psychic's walkie-talkie says his full name, and the window behind him opens by itself. He surveys the vicinity around his booth, but finds the surroundings empty. Suddenly, the red girl appears outside, jumping over cars and branches. The window reopens, but when he closes it, the red girl unexpectedly appears in the window. So he grabs a firecracker in his drawer and tries to light his firecracker with his shaking hands to scare it away, but the red girl quickly attacks him. The following day, the doctor updates the girlfriend with the findings on the grandma who suffered from food poisoning, causing her vomiting last night. After inspection of her vomit, they discovered a very rare moth called Death Head Hawk Moth. Until now, it's still a mystery where she obtained the insect. In her apartment, the girlfriend conducts research about the moth. Surprisingly, the face at the back of the moth looks like the face of the red girl. The same night, the girlfriend wakes up from sleep. She finds blood on her hands and it escalates quickly into a pool of blood. She tries to grasp such gore and cries upon seeing the red girl staring back at her. The red girl disappears and then suddenly screams at her face. The girlfriend wakes up the following morning. She cries after the frightening nightmare. Later, she accompanies the grandma in her house. The grandma tells her that she's bequeathing the house to Wei, for it's all that's left to them after losing their once well-off life. Afterward, the grandma asks her to grab a shoebox. The grandma reveals that the red girl visited her last night, asking for a new pair of shoes so she can lead her to Wei again. Suddenly, the grandma cries, saying that it should have been her and not them. She adds that Wei really loves her because he doesn't call her full name. Her words, however, bring only confusion to the girlfriend, for she can't understand what she means. While at work, the girlfriend asks for help from her listeners to give her more information about the death head Hawkmoth. After her shift, she receives a call from a stranger and writes the mountain's name on a paper, but the call ends abruptly. 
The girlfriend visits the grandma, but she finds the police surrounding the apartment building. She sees the police interrogating a man who saw the grandma heading to the said mountain to find her, pertaining to the red girl. After preparing her hiking gear in a backpack, she visits the grandma's home and walks into Wei's bedroom. She happily looks at their couple photo, but shortly cries after reading her boyfriend's note behind the photo, saying he'll marry her in five years. The following day, the girlfriend joins the local rescue team to search for her boyfriend and his grandma in the said mountain. As they trek the mountain's steep pathway, she spots the grandma unconscious across the small river. The rescue team immediately send the grandma to safety, when the grandma suddenly opposes and shouts at them to go back. Then the captain approaches the girlfriend to show her a pair of shoes, and she confirms it's Wei's shoes. The rescue team camps in the forest that night. The captain guesses that it's the girlfriend's first time camping, so he assures her to just respect the trees for they have life too. According to urban legend, when people cut down trees for no reason, the mountain will capture these people and plant them to replace the trees. One of the rescuers asks how she knows where her boyfriend is, and the girlfriend reveals an old mountain guide calls her to tell her the location. However, the rescuers give her a weird look, because the said guide who built the pathway in the mountain is already dead years ago. The following day, the rescue team splits into groups to search the three paths separately. The captain brings the girlfriend to his group, and along their search, she gets separated from them. She tries to find them, ties red tape around the trees, and blows a whistle for them to find her. But the fog begins to thicken, and the sky grows dark. When she eats alone under the moon, a hand suddenly grabs her shoulder. She quickly lights a flare and sees the giant hawk moth release smaller moths to attack her. She falls unconscious, but eventually wakes up to someone calling her. She then lights another flare to search for a child, calling her mommy. Unknowingly, she finds a grove, filled with corpses in their trunks. She tries to escape from the death grove, but her stomach aches as a baby forms within her. She bleeds like giving birth to an infant. Afterward, a child appears before her, asking why she got rid of her baby. She crawls towards the child and embraces it, tearily apologizing. It turns out she got pregnant before, but had the baby aborted because she was not ready. She suddenly wakes up in Wei's dream apartment. When she finally sees him, she tightly hugs him as if there's no forever. She then asks where the grandma is, but he says that she's already been in the nursing home for two years. Wei then offers his girlfriend to eat, but it raises her suspicion. She says she wants to visit his grandma, but Wei continuously stops her, so she grabs the flare in her pocket and lights it. It turns out these heartwarming reunions between Wei and his grandma and his girlfriend are all illusions set by the red girl in order to trap them in the mountain forever. However, the girlfriend successfully outsmarts the red girl and breaks the illusion. After that, she finds Wei stuck within a tree trunk and more Mosines surround them. Still, she dares to save Wei and they escape together, but she trips and falls, allowing the red girl to trap her with branches. As the red girl tightens its branches to her, the Mosines gather around the unconscious Wei on the ground. Right at that moment, the girlfriend reminisces her joyful memories with Wei. Love fuels her to fight back, so she lights the last flare in her pocket and throws it at the red girl. A strong light beam suddenly explodes in the sky, causing the Mosines and the red girl to disintegrate. After winning the battle, the girlfriend hugs Wei and cries for their real reunion. The movie ends with the rescue team bringing Wei and his girlfriend to safety and away from the haunting mountain. It's the future, and the girlfriend gets married to Wei and gets pregnant again. Everything seems normal again for the four-membered family, until a hawkmoth lands on a wall, meaning that she never leaves the mountain and is still under the red girl's illusion. Later, her baby, under an ultrasound, reveals a resemblance to the red girl. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.